California is currently experiencing unusual weather patterns. The average rainfall for the month of August in the Los Angeles area is literally zero inches. And yet, Tropical Storm Hillary is going to bring one to two years worth of rain in just two days. The last tropical storm that hit Southern California happened 84 years ago, and that's quite a while. So having all this in mind, you might be thinking, can this tropical storm really cause the next major earthquake on the San Andreas Fault? Well, let's start with a basic question. What is an earthquake? To a scientist, an earthquake happens when two major blocks of the Earth's crust suddenly slip past one another. To people like us, an earthquake represents the ground shaking that we experience as a result of the sudden slip. Here's a 3D simulation that I've made of the 1994 Northridge earthquake. Hurricane Hillary, which is now a Category 4 hurricane, will bring between 2 to 4 inches of rain in lower elevation areas across the Southern California, and perhaps over 10 inches of rain in the mountains. That is a huge amount of water, especially if you think how large the impacted area is going to be. The greater Los Angeles area covers about 33,000 square miles and has a population of about 19 million people, making it the second largest populated area in the United States after New York. So how heavy will this water be? Will that put too much pressure on the faults near the Los Angeles area? In order to answer to this question, we have to take into consideration the depth at which earthquakes happen. Most faults in Southern California have an average depth of 10 miles. And 10 miles is way more, way more than 2 inches of water. From this perspective, the additional pressure that this storm would create would be negligible. There would be no influence on the major faults like the San Andreas Fault. This legendary fault is a strike-slip fault, which means that when it ruptures, one side of the fault will move horizontally in respect to the other. The North American plate is slowly moving towards the south, while the Pacific plate is moving towards the north. Hence, the stress that is being generated as a result of this process is more of a shear stress rather than a vertical compressional stress. If you think more about it, Heavy rain could theoretically delay the next major quake on the San Andreas. But again, the influence would be negligible. We're talking about a 0.000001% influence. So we've learned that having even 10 years of rain falling in one day over the Southern California can't realistically influence the timing of the next major earthquake. If a large earthquake does actually happen in California over the next couple of days, it would happen out of sheer random chance. Scientists know that the time passed since the last major quake on the San Andreas Fault is not relevant in trying to create a prediction. Earthquake occurrence is best described by the Poisson distribution, which is used quite extensively in statistics. This basically tells us that given a specific location and enough time, a quake will happen. It could be tomorrow or in the next 50 to 100 years. But can't this huge amount of water infiltrate the soil and lubricate the fault lines causing them to rupture? Most likely not, because even if you don't see it, there's already so much water in the ground at depths that vary between 100 to 700 feet. Having in mind that all the rainfall caused from Tropical Storm Hillary is going to happen in a very short time span, this water will most likely end up back in the ocean where it came from. Tropical Storm Hillary will cause extensive flash floods which will not allow the water to slowly infiltrate in the ground. What we will see for sure, Tropical Storm Hillary will cause a cascade of events that will trigger a once-in-a-lifetime 
earthquake disaster to the infrastructure present in Southern California. Many highways and underpasses will get flooded, bringing traffic to a complete stall. The tourism in this area will suffer as well, as hundreds of thousands of visitors will be grounded in their hotel rooms. Some places might even lose electricity as a result of sustained winds and high water levels. There will be lots of travel delays and canceled flights. Landslides could also be a problem in the next couple of days, and many houses could get destroyed if that happens in populated regions. Last but not least, the mass media will experience an enormous earthquake of terrifying headlines and never heard before stories that could last for weeks to come as communities will start rebuilding. A major 7.8 earthquake on the southern portion of the San Andreas Fault could cause up to $200 billion of economic losses. California's atmospheric rivers that happened in the beginning of the year caused $30 billion in damage, enough to say it was comparable to a moderate-sized earthquake. On the other hand, Tropical Storm Hillary, though as not frightening as a major quake, could end up producing an unexpectedly high amount of economic losses in the next coming days. I would be interested in hearing your thoughts and opinions about this in the comments below. Do you think that this storm will cause considerable economic losses comparable to the 1994 Northridge earthquake, for example? Stay safe through the storm and make sure you keep yourself and your family updated. Take care.